What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So if you're not yet familiar with Duji, they make some of the most unique smartphones on the market right now. And if you're looking for a tough and rugged device that could probably survive a natural disaster, that's exactly what Duji's smartphones are all about. They just released this, their new S100. And for well under $500, it's I think one of their best devices yet. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know and I guarantee you, you haven't seen a phone like this before. So first things first, let's just quickly unbox it. And sliding off the lid, you immediately get your first glance at this behemoth of a smartphone, but more on that in a second. Inside the box, you also get a screen protector and installation kit, though there is already a screen protector installed on the phone. There's a stack of paperwork and instructions and a USB-C cable and charging brick, a big one too. This phone supports 66 watt wired charging, which it certainly needs since it's powered by a battery that's literally three times the size as the one inside your current smartphone. With all that stuff out of the way, here is the Duji S100. And what you're looking at is the entire device. It isn't like a phone with some removable case pre-installed. It is, in and of itself, a big, thick, standalone smartphone made to be tough. And I think that's pretty obvious just by looking at it. So size-wise, the S100 is technically a 6.58 inch device. That's the screen size, at least, corner to corner. But there's a lot of stuff around the screen, including both top and bottom bezels, a teardrop selfie, camera, dual front-facing speakers at the top and bottom, and an entire rubbery housing protecting all the corners and edges. You end up with a screen-to-body ratio of about 70%, but everything around the screen certainly serves a purpose. And in the hand, it's not so much the screen size or overall height of the phone that you notice first, it's actually the thickness. This phone is 18 millimeters thick, nearly three quarters of an inch, more than twice as thick as a Samsung S23, for example, and rather than being built from easily breakable glass or shiny polished stainless steel, this phone is covered in thick rubber at the top and bottom edge with some extra cush on the corners, an industrial style metal frame screwed together up and down the sides, and the back is this super nice almost leather-like material with lined accents that mimic a stitch. You could compare it all to a smartphone case, but the materials that this phone is made of are nicer and tougher than any case I've tried, and nothing about the build or overall design of this phone feels cheap or gimmicky at all. It's surprisingly premium, but in a real rugged way. In the hand, this thing no doubt is an absolute unit. It's actually not that heavy, which is surprising. It's just a lot of volume to manhandle, but I think some people might like this. It's something to grab onto, and it really feels like you've got something durable and sturdy in your hand. Taking a look around, there's a lot of little things that are certainly unique to this device. On the left side, you have a customizable side button that you can program for one click, two clicks, and three clicks to launch apps, shortcuts, the flashlight, stuff like that, which is pretty handy. There's also your dual SIM card tray just above it. On the right, big tactile, metal volume buttons positioned just above the power button, which doubles as your fingerprint sensor. And this unlocks the phone super quickly. I had no issues setting it up and it seems lightning fast and very accurate. At the top of the phone, like I mentioned, the first set of front facing speakers towering over the separate earpiece and the selfie camera. At the bottom, the second set of front facing speakers and the USB-C port, which is hidden behind a little cover for added protection. No dust or debris getting in there. And around back, three camera lenses, which I'll demo in a minute, that includes a 108 megapixel main shooter, a 20 megapixel infrared nighttime camera, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. By the way, it should come as no surprise that this phone is water and dust resistant, IP68 certified for up to 1.5 meters of water for 30 minutes, IP69K certified for high pressure cleaning and sanitizing. Duji is in fact so confident of their water resistance on this phone that they even have a shortcut to an underwater camera mode that enables the volume buttons to be used as record, capture, and camera switching functions so you don't have to use the touchscreen while you take pictures underwater. Pretty crazy. And one last thing, the S100 is MIL STD 810H compliant, which is the actual military test standard for durability for high and low temperatures, rain, humidity, rust, dust, sand, drops, shocks, and a whole lot more. So obviously this thing is tough, but 
How is it as a smartphone? Well, pretty decent actually. The 6.58 inch screen is an IPS LCD panel coming in at a resolution of 2408 by 1080 for around 401 pixels per inch. Now, do I wish this was an OLED display? Sure, but it's still very bright and very colorful for what it is. And surprisingly, it is also a 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate display. You can pick between dedicated 60, 90, and 120 hertz options or an adaptive refresh rate mode. I stuck with the static 120 hertz, and that obviously is going to make the phone feel fast and visually look very smooth. Overall, this is a viewing experience that I think is more than good. Visually, there's a lot to like, and arguably at this price point, the sacrifices are relatively minimal considering what all else this phone offers. It's a big, bright, colorful, and sharp screen with a high refresh rate to top it off, and I don't have much to complain about. Now, paired with this crazy speaker setup, this is what takes things to another level. Those big front-facing speakers are not only very loud, but crystal clear. It's practically a Bluetooth speaker itself. And this setup is absolutely the most extreme on any smartphone I've seen. If you like playing music or listening to your shows out loud, this is the device for you. Inside, the S100 is powered by the MediaTek Helio G99 processor, a barely one-year-old mid-range chip paired to the Mali G57 GPU and 12 gigs of RAM, which is probably the most interesting bit. Not many Android devices have that much RAM at this price point. You also get 256 gigs of onboard storage, which is quite a lot. And here are the Geekbench scores for those of you who like to compare and contrast. Now, on the one hand, I actually think these specs are solid for what this phone is. It's not a flagship phone by any means, but there's nothing powering this phone really that's old, outdated, underpowered, or otherwise indicates that corners were cut. The missing piece though is the software elements. Right now this phone runs Android 12. It runs a really clean and minimal version of Android 12 with no bloatware, no BS apps, no funky skins or launchers or limitations of any kind. It's actually a pretty streamlined and minimal software experience, which I think a lot of people may like, especially those who want a tough and rugged device without any fancy, unnecessary bells and whistles. I just hope that Doogee can provide additional software support for this phone in the years to come, because while it's super tough and rugged on the outside, the phone needs to function properly in the long run as well. At the moment, it's great. The phone feels fast, not just because of the decent specs and 12 gigs of RAM, like I said, but because there's just nothing holding back this OS, not even an app drawer or a launcher. It's as simple as can be, but I just hope there's a couple major Android updates in the near future to cement the longevity element with this phone beyond its tough outer shell. Speaking of longevity, one of the main reasons this phone is so thick, besides its rugged exterior element, is the battery that's crammed inside. It's powered by a 10,000 an 800 milliamp battery. By comparison, some of the other big Android phone batteries usually top out at 5,000 or maybe 6,000 milliamps. And the phones you're most familiar with, like the iPhone 14 or the Samsung S23, are 3,000 to 4,000 milliamps. So this thing packs some power for sure. And I'd argue it's probably going to be at least a three-day device for some folks, especially if you opt for the 60 hertz or adaptive refresh rate display option. And with power saving options, options enabled, you could probably go even further than that. The 66 watt wired charging support is definitely much needed for a phone like this. And surprisingly, it also supports 15 watt wireless charging as well. So all in all, power and longevity are certainly two areas where this phone shines. Finally, let's talk about those cameras. And once again, there are a couple really unique elements that this phone offers. The hardware, as I mentioned, includes a triple lens rear setup with a 108 megapixel main lens, 20 megapixel secondary lens with night vision and infrared lights, and a 12 megapixel 130 degree ultra wide, which is even wider than usual. The selfie camera up front is a pretty respectable 32 megapixel shooter, and Inside the camera app, Duty just offers a ton of shooting modes, options, and features. You've got shortcuts to things like the night vision camera, which is really awesome. Again, something I've never seen before on a phone, as well as the 108 megapixel shooting mode, which I definitely recommend utilizing for super crisp looking pictures. There's portrait mode, pro controls, GIF maker, slow-mo, bokeh effects, and additional adjustments like EIS and anti-flickering to really improve those shots. Now, some stuff like the various beauty filters aren't really my 
bag, but taking some quick sample shots and utilizing the 108 megapixel mode, you can see that this phone definitely delivers some nice looking shots. I'm pleasantly surprised by the capabilities, honestly. It takes a lot to compete in today's world of smartphone cameras, but this phone seems to offer more than enough to satisfy just about anyone's camera needs, and I'm super impressed. So I gotta be honest, phones like this often come with many sacrifices. You usually get all the interesting stuff, like a tough and rugged build or underwater camera mode or night vision at the expense of a good screen or decent internals. But the Duty S100 for well under $500 doesn't really have many compromises in my eyes. This is a crazy tough phone with a design and build that far exceeds any third party case you could find. The screen is solid, the specs are plenty capable, the battery is massive, and the camera is good too. For the price, this is a really unique but also pretty solid smartphone, and I'm really impressed with how far Duji has come with a device like this. So there you go, those are my thoughts on the new Duji S100. What do you guys think of this thing? Please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.